Good morning. Today is Tuesday, October 25th. I'm Danielle Wiggins with your three news now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC YouTube page. We start with Holly for a check of today's forecast because Holly the last few days have been perfect. I know it and uh, we're going to get through another day of very mild weather. The only big difference today is you're going to notice more filtered sunshine at times. We'll see some sun but it's going to be that partly to mostly cloudy sky and then more overcast as we get into this evening. But notice the view here as we look ahead to even eight o'clock tonight. We are still well into the 60s. All of you above normal highs even at that point, which is impressive. And then it's not till after midnight that we start to see some of these shower chances arrive and uh, even more so for tomorrow morning's drive. But it's going to be scattered showers, not a complete washout by any stretch but we will have some on and off wet weather to deal with for your Wednesday. And then as we do look ahead, there is going to be a bit of a cool down. So we'll be chatting about that. Now, remember those average highs for this day, 60 degrees. So we're very close to it tomorrow. Then a little cooler Thursday. We'll be grabbing that extra fleece or sweatshirt, but dry. And this is a big weekend because we are leading up to, of course, Halloween, which is Monday. And I'm sure that many of you might be doing some trick or treating or heading to haunted houses. Whatever the case, the weekend weather is going to cooperate and be seasonal and beautiful, partly to mostly sunny skies. Then Danielle will cue those spooky showers just <laughs> in time for trick or treat. But let me just say it's scattered and at least we're still talking highs where they should be. Yeah, and at least it's not snow. Thank you so much, Holly. And we begin with an update from Maslin, where officers from the Indian River Juvenile Facility are speaking out after inmates barricaded themselves in a school building armed with makeshift weapons. Twelve people were involved. This all comes just one week after a guard was brutally attacked by those jailed at Indian River. Officers tell us this could have been avoided if the higher ups address the ongoing staffing shortages, made safety a priority and changed policies to hold people accountable rather than the hands off approach. And I don't feel safe for the, you know, 90% of the kids that want to do their time and go home. The kids know you can't do nothing to them. And once you embolden the kid to realize that they can attack a staff, they can destroy something and nothing's going to happen to them. Then they get more emboldened and things go further and further out of control like they have been. A state representative tells us that there have been 77 assaults at the facility this year. And a Medina High School teacher has been placed on administrative leave after the district announced it's under that he's under an FBI investigation. In a letter released last night, Medina superintendent says social studies teacher Kevin Hedrick was put on paid leave effective immediately. The district says it is fully cooperating with the investigation, but that no other further comment can be made at this time. And two far right conspiracy theorists have pleaded guilty in a, to a robocall scheme. Jacob Wool and Jack Berkman pleaded guilty yesterday to single counts of telecommunications fraud. The scheme involved telling people they could be arrested or forced to receive vaccinations based on information they submitted in votes by mail. In total, the two men were accused of arranging about 85,000 robocalls to predominantly black neighborhoods in five states. They each face up to a year in prison. They will be sentenced next month. And changes are coming to Lake Erie fishing competition. Well, now a, made, a metal detector will be used to check for cheating. It's a major rules change after a cheating scandal was discovered last month at a local walleye tournament. Two men were indicted on several charges when their fish were found stuffed with weights. Cleveland City Council passed legislation last night that will send $17 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds to be used for lead safe programs in the city. The legislation will give $13 million to the Mount Sinai Healthcare Foundation. The group ensures that rental properties and other homes built before 1978 are lead safe. Another $3 million will go towards properties in the city that are in need of lead damage repair. 
University Hospitals is taking the next step into innovative cancer care. The hospital just opened the Wesley Center for Immunotherapy at UH Seidman Cancer Center, which triples the size of the existing lab. This will not only allow UH to attract top scientists, but also treat patients and create new therapies in-house. One of those therapies is shortening the time of CAR T cell therapy from three weeks to just 24 hours. Many of the patients in need of these treatments are rather ill and uh, cannot wait for two to three weeks. So the ability to generate these cells within a very short period of time really adds to, the, to, adds to our ability to, to treat patients and is a significant advance. Immunotherapy is the process of letting a patient's immune system identify and attack cancer cells. Clinical trials have shown increased rates of remission and survival, as well as decreased side effects compared to regular chemotherapy. And major development like housing and commercial projects are bringing new life to Cleveland's Midtown neighborhood. So we got a tour of the area yesterday. It focused on projects around Euclid Avenue, Carnegie and East 66th Street. A housing development project called the Allen Estates is minority owned and female led and is bringing 300 new housing units to the Huff neighborhood. The Cleveland Foundation is also moving its headquarters to East 66th and Euclid. We really wanted to locate specifically on East 66th Street and help develop both sides of it so that we could turn the energy north to Huff along East 66th Street and really leverage the asset-rich neighborhood that exists there already. Other projects highlighted include the Agora Theater, which is undergoing a $15 million renovation to convert office spaces into apartments. Well, don't worry, though. The music venue space is not going anywhere because it is owned separately. OK, get this. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is making it easier for families to visit the museum through a program called Museums for All. It offers low income families wider access to the Rock Hall. The program supports those who receive food assistance. So all people have to do is show their SNAP or EBT card at the Rock Hall entrance and pay one dollar per person for up to four people. A program like this helps to build lifelong learners. Right, because it's something that enjoying a museum you can do throughout your entire life. And here in Cleveland, we're lucky to have so many great museums because it removes socioeconomic barriers from anybody who's looking to come into a cultural institution like this, experience the history, the culture, the music that we have here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Typically, regular admission tickets are $35 per person. The initiative is in place across the country and includes institutions like zoos, botanical gardens, and science centers. Well, thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Danielle Wiggins, and I'll see you tomorrow morning on go starting at 4.30 a.m. Have a great day, everybody.